I have truly spent the last three weeks planning this video idea, so I am very glad you clicked on it. I'm not that big of a YouTuber, so I don't get that many DMs. It's not like it's always overflowing. That being said, of the DMs that I do get, a overwhelming majority of them are about my Instagram stories. You guys are replying back to my stories that I post every day, and you're asking, how did you do this? I love the aesthetic of them. I love the theme of them, and it is super flattering because I have developed a bit of a passion for my stories. I know some people think of them as a little bit vain or kind of take you out of living in the moment, but I sort of get into a flow state when I'm working on my stories. I think it's so important to preserve that sort of creativity and just doodling on them. I'm thinking of new ways to design, so if you haven't seen my Instagram stories, I'm gonna link my Instagram below. You can check them out while you watch this video. I'm also gonna be showing you a bunch of examples here. We're gonna go through number one, how to create the actual photos, boomerangs, videos, how to take those and edit them, and then number two, what to layer on top of them to make your stories super crisp so that 10x the people that usually watch them start watching them. Ambitious goal, but I wanna hit that for you guys. Firstly, we just gotta get this out of the way. There are three types of posts you can put on your Instagram story. Number one, videos. Number two, boomerangs. And number three, still photos, just normal photos. We all know this, we're all on Instagram, we got it. In terms of the distribution of when you wanna post each, I personally swing towards the videos and the boomerangs and I reserve the still photos for my actual Instagram posts that I put on my feed. You never know, you could take a still photo that's so nice that you put it on your story and you wish you would have saved it for your feed. So I try to take boomerangs and videos in my stories as much as possible. And the other note is if you wanna have more engaging stories is to oscillate between those three. So don't post five still photos in a row, don't post five videos in a row because no one wants to watch through, I guess that could be up to like a minute of actual footage. No one wants to watch through all of that. So kind of switch between them. You can kind of bulk take all of your footage and then upload them as, you know, different um, as rotating between the options. First, we're gonna tackle the art of taking a video for an Instagram story. I see a lot of people when they're taking videos just kind of hold the camera and kind of move it around like this and it's not a very steady shot. I really work to kind of stay in one place, hold my phone and then sort of do this. So you'll see on my stories a lot of time I'm just panning over almost like I'm taking a panorama photo, like really still so you can get all the action, go slow because iPhones don't have that good um, of um, frame rate so you're not gonna get the full photo like in actual visual visual content if you go too fast and just try to keep it as steady as possible hold it in one spot if there's a lot of motion in the photo already um, but if there's not a lot of motion I usually swivel it you can also screen record your iPhone which not a lot of people know about. You can put this in your sort of drop down menu for your iPhone. I'll show how to do that here. And shout out to Jared ZSZ for giving me that life hack. I'm very grateful to him because I love to screen record Spotify. I know you can directly share your Spotify songs to your Instagram, but you can actually hear the music if you do that, which defeats the purpose. So Instagram content strategists, please add that option in. But I will record my favorite songs and that way you can kind of get a taste for it and people might actually want to go ahead and listen to that song. I will screen record new videos that are out. I'll screen record other stuff I see on the internet that I just think is funny. Um, so you can go ahead and use that option in videos. And then also, if you're not taking the video natively in the Instagram app, which I actually recommend you don't, I don't take any of my Instagram stories natively in Instagram. I take them all with the camera. Um, just easier to kind of manipulate them that way. You can also do slow-mo and time lapses. The problem with those two is the quality is really going to degrade when you upload it to your story. So be wary with those. Just know that you're not going to get the fine details of them, but they are cool effects to use. One of my friends actually recommended taking Instagram videos on Snapchat. Not even posting them to Snapchat, I guess you could, but take the video on Snapchat, save it to your camera roll, from your camera roll, upload to Instagram. I've tried that a couple of times. I think the quality is a little bit better, but it just tends to be so much work and Snapchat is so laggy for me. I don't use that option, but if you're really, really wanting the video to be as high quality as possible, I recommend the Snapchat options. For some reason, the compression of Instagram works better with Snapchat. That's video. Next is boomerangs, which are the best option because they are so unique to Instagram. You can't really do them on Snapchat that I know of. I've completely ditched Snapchat, so I cannot offer Snapchat story advice. Um, 
There's also an art to boomerangs. The Instagram hack here is that you can actually take live photos and turn them into boomerangs. So every time you see a boomerang on my feed, I did not take that in the Instagram app, maybe one in a hundred I will. They're always, always live photos. I saw that from Carly the Prepster. She gave that tip and I've been doing that from now on because it allows you to actually edit the boomerang and not be stuck with the Instagram filters. So I'll get into how to edit those in a second, but I also just want to talk about the actual composition of the boomerang. So many people make this mistake. Do not swerve your camera around when you're doing boomerangs. Like a lot of people, they'll be at a baseball game and so they'll film the person next to them and they'll film the field and they'll go back like this. And so the boomerang is just like whipping around and you just can't see anything. And I always swipe past those. I'm not sure if you guys do the same, but they seem fun in the moment, I guess. It like makes sense logically, but if you're gonna do that, take a video. It's slower, you can see it all. It's annoying to get this motion sick with, sickness with the boomerang. So just hold, hold your phone as steady as possible because boomerangs are so sensitive. Like if you shake it a little bit at the end, the boomerang can kind of adjust. So if I'm taking like a city street shot and there's cars going by, I hold it as still as possible, take the live photo and hold it still after you take the photo. Um, and then I turn that into a boomerang by holding it down on the screen. And that way you can use the iPhone's native camera editing suite. So you can use the lighting filters. I usually just swipe it to be brighter. You can also change the contrast. You can um, up the highlights or decrease the highlights depending on how bright the photo is. Depending on the natural coloring of the boomerang or live photo, I guess, I'll use the vibrant filter or the warm vibrant filter or like, a um, cu couple of the other built-in filters on the iPhone and then I'll put them into Instagram and then still I might use Oslo or one of the other filters. Stay later in the video if you wanna hear about which filters to use because there's a lot of mistakes made on that too just from an aesthetic standpoint in my opinion. Again, like I'm not an expert. I've just gotten a lot of you saying that you appreciate the way I do my uh, stories. So I'm trying to help here. I'm not saying that like if you do these things, you're the worst. I'm just saying that in terms of the ideal Instagram story, here are my tips. Also, if this has been helpful at all so far, please give this video a like. That will help other people see it. And soon we'll have beautiful Instagram stories all over our feeds to enjoy. So the last type of post you can upload to your story is just a still photo. Um, these tend to be my favorite just because boomerangs and videos, unfortunately right now, the quality is just degraded so much. And I tweeted about this. I'm so upset. Instagram TV is high quality, perfect. It's like almost 4K level. And then we're stuck with his literal gar garbage that when we upload a video, it immediately just turns to crap. Um, and you can see that on most of mine, like it just absolutely turns to crap. I have some advice on how to make it not do that, but still photos almost never turn to crap. So I like these a lot. Um, but again, you have to be careful with what you post on a still photo. So you'll never see me posting photos of myself on my story. It's always the world around me. Cause I kind of like thinking that if you're watching my stories, it's like seeing what I see through my eyes. So you never really see me on my stories. It's always my friends and um, my environment around me. Anyway, still photos. Do not ever even think about posting a landscape photo to your story. Don't do it. I know it's an option. It wasn't always an option for a reason because it doesn't look good. Um, that is a huge pet peeve of mine. I know it's irrational and like it's fine to post a landscape photo, but we are vertical mode now, baby. Like that is the future. It used to be don't ever take photos or videos vertically. Like people used to get pissed off if you take a vertical video. Now that is the future. Instagram TV is going that way. Like Facebook's going that way. It's all vertical. So if you're posting something horizontal, it's just so not optimized. You can barely see anything. The colors they put around the photo are gross. It just doesn't look good. So I would avoid it as much as you can. What you can do is crop a landscape photo into a vertical shape and the quality won't be as good, but honestly with an iPhone 10, it might actually still be good. So just don't, just don't do it. Save the landscape photos for your Instagram posts. That's what I'd recommend. Um, if you're gonna take a photo for your story, make sure it's vertical. I am almost always using portrait mode when I am taking still photos for stories. Just like it, if you don't have portrait mode, no worries, but that's just my tendency. And I always take the photo so that if I plan to write something on it, there's some sort of space in the photo to do so. Now about how to edit the photo. A lot of you have asked me how I edit my stories and I'll actually my Instagram photos tends to be a pretty similar process. So we'll just go right through it. If you wanna know how to edit photos like me, these next 45 seconds are for you. Hit it voiceover, Catherine. All right, so I take this sucker into Visco cam, scroll right to the C suite of photos. I'm usually opting for C6, 7, 8, 9. 
In this case, I like the way C7 looks, so I take that, usually pull it down a little bit, definitely bring up the contrast. I'll go ahead and bring up the highlights as well, boost the saturation a bit, sharpen it a bit, and then usually I'll make it a little bit more yellow, orange toned, and then use the skin tone to make it a little more pink. And then typically I'm bringing up the grain depending on the photo. Then I go ahead and save that to my camera roll and then I go into the eye photo options and just bring up the brightness a little bit on that. And then take that into Instagram and usually swipe the Oslo feature and you're all set. Videos, boomerangs, still photos, that is all pre-production work. If you do those well enough, you might not actually have to put any text, GIFs, stickers, anything on the, the post itself. You could just upload to your story. But this is where the fun comes in. I spend a lot of time decorating the posts themselves. Again, because it's just genuinely pleasurable for me. I'm not doing it because I'm trying to impress anyone. It's just literally for me. Um, and a few of you are impressed by it, which very much flatters me and I appreciate the feedback, so couple of different ways you can accessorize the photo. I feel so dumb saying this, but this is a, this is a video that was requested, okay? Um, you can do text, calligraphy, GIFs, stickers. That's kind of how I would break it down. Let's start with text. One don't here, um, don't ever do more than two lines of text with any of the fonts besides the typewriter font or the, the normal font, like just the normal standard one. Um, and this is because, I don't know why, but the font sizes change for some of those other ones, depending like the strong one or like the, the cursive one, like they all like change. So one word of the sentence will be really big and it just like does not look polished and it just doesn't look as crisp. So if you want to say something long, use typewriter or the other normal one. Um, if it's just going to be a one word like glossy or like fab like you're fine using one of those other fonts um but that's what i would stick to most of the time i am using all caps i just think it looks so much more professional all of my favorite instagram stories always use all caps so i do it i rarely ever am using lowercase unless it's the typewriter font i promise if you literally just change that one element like going from lowercase sentences to all caps you're gonna look you know 10x better like it's it's a simple switch you can also mess around with the spacing of the letters. That is something that is so simple, um, but if you just remember to do it, it can really add a lot of like texture and fun to the photo. So if you're trying to say like best lunch ever, you could do like B space best E space space S space space T and do best. And then you can maybe write in calligraphy lunch and then space out ever. And it just makes it more visually interesting because it's not like the other stories you see on your feed. Um, so play around with the spacing. I find that to be really fun and elevates it. Also change around with the color. White is a staple. I don't think you can ever really go wrong with white, but I find a lot of the compliments I get are when I have like a sunset photo or a beach photo and I coordinate the letters to the colors in the photo. So I'll make them very similar to the sky or to the sunset, or if they're on tile, I'll make them coordinate with the tile. And that's just using that little dropper tool um, next to the colors. That is really fun. And if you do each letter individually, like if you type every letter like B, E, S, T, all, all separately, you can change each letter. It takes a lot of time. It's ridiculous, honestly. So this one's like a special effect. I don't use it all the time and you do not want to have very many letters to do it on. So use that one sparingly, but it is really fun and makes your photos just look so good. If you have something with sort of an overarching shape, like a hillside or a tree, you can kind of move the letters again individually to fit that shape. And that always looks really, really cool. I love that effect. Again, it takes so much time. Um, it's only for when you're just really bored, like on a train ride or on a commute and you just want to like mess around for a while. In terms of the actual text itself, another fun effect is if you say, again, I'm just using the best lunch ever. I don't know why that came up in my mind, but whatever, I've never used that before. If you say best lunch ever, put another color behind it. So write best lunch ever twice, change one of those colors, make one of them white potentially, and then you can make them the exact same size. Be careful to make them the exact same size and the orientation and you can line them up so it's a bit of a drop shadow um, and that looks really good if i'm not willing to do that a lot of times i'll just take one of the brushes and i'll just swipe behind the word and that adds a lot of character too you can also do sort of like a layered effect where you could say like 
brunch, 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 and do three different colors or three different fonts or three different sizes. Um, I've done this with emojis before. That's a fun effect. But by far, the best way to do it is, like I've already said, mix text with calligraphy. So if you're gonna do, you know, a three word little phrase, make one of those written in like a cursive font if you can do that. If not, no worries. Um, that just looks bomb. On that note, in terms of calligraphy and using those brushes instead of text, I'm sort of picky here, but of the options given, I like to use the very first one and the very last one, like the chalkboardy one and the normal one. The neon one and the other one, I've used before, but they never look as good. Like I can never get them to look as good. Um, I just think they aren't as polished. So do what you will, but those ones are not my faves. I'm almost always using the smallest size as possible in terms of the brush stroke itself. Um, you can always use a stylus pen as well. I just happen to have a free pen that has like a stylus on the end of it where the eraser should be. So sometimes I use that, but for years I was literally doing it with my finger. Again, you can match the color to the photo, um, something in the photo. I almost always do that. I rarely do brush strokes in white unless I'm doing script. There is one don't here, and that is to not scribble a huge blotch behind your words. I've seen Aspen Ovar do this a bunch. It doesn't look horrible, but like, it just looks very amateur when you just go like, and then you just plop the word on there. If you're gonna do that, you might as well do the automatic background that happens with some of the texts that comes up, like just make a border around it, um, cause that just does not look great in my book. Something I've been playing around with lately is actually using the eraser as a calligraphy tool. So if I'm writing a word, sometimes I'll strike the eraser through it. Uh, a lot of times I'll make little hash marks. So that's kind of like a dashed line. Uh, you can also drag a brush stroke through the scene and then erase. So that's kind of going in and out of things. That's a fun technique. Use the eraser how you will, but I find that that's really fun to play with and looks very different. Similar to text, you can also match the sort of outline of a shape. I did it with a waffle. It's kind of fun to sort of um, stroke around uh, a shape in the photo too. Now it's time for gifts and stickers. I love gifts. I love, love, love finding new gifts. I think they're so fun. The worst part is though, it always degrades the quality of your photo, boomerang or video. It just automatically poops on it. I don't know why they can't figure this element out, but you definitely don't want to use more than one GIF in a photo unless you just don't care about the quality degrading completely. I tend to use GIFs on photos for the most part. In terms of the stickers, there's only a select few stickers I ever use. Uh, the sound on sticker, but only in white. If you tap it, it becomes white. I use the heart favorite emoji one, but you can also do a GIF version of that. Um, sometimes you use a little envelope, like paper airplane one, um, but in general, they don't look too good. Uh, they make the photo look a little like more mature. I don't know, I just don't like the stickers as much. So the gifts are a good alternative. And I kind of have a style to the gifts that I pick. I can't really explain it, um, but if you go on my stories, you can kind of see the sort of gifts I use. I love to use like confetti gifts, snow gifts, like wind gifts. If you have a large patch of the sky or like water, um, you can put gifts in that and make a texture in the sky. And I love doing that, um, do stars, it's really fun. I love to get creative with the stickers, like this airport photo, probably one of the best to date. Um, I love just sort of arranging them in different ways, using multiple in one, and just getting really um, crafty with it. My sort of approach for using gifts is if I'm gonna say, again, best lunch ever, I'm just like, oh, up to here with that phrase, but I chose it so now I have to stick with it. Um, Instead of saying that, I'll literally just search lunch in gifts, see if I can find something better, and then I could say best gif of lunch ever. You can do that what you will, but um, use particular keywords to kind of activate what you want out of it. So if you want the sun, obviously search sun. If you want something summery, you can say summer or June, July, and like different things will pop up. I love the gif selection. I think there's some hidden gems in there. And then the last post-production element are the built-in Instagram filters. I am pretty fond of these. I remember when I first started using Instagram stories, I was like, wow, these are good filters because the actual Instagram filters you can put on your photos, I have never used, but these ones I use all the time. I really only ever use Oslo, Cairo, and Jiper. Those are like my holy trinity of filters. I think the rest of them um, just don't sort of make the, the you know, footage look as good. I don't know, I just, those are the three I use. So if you're looking to imitate my style, those are the three that I go for depending on the, the actual composition of the photo. 
after saying all of this, I actually cannot believe how much thought goes into my stories. I tried to break it down and unpack it as much as possible. If you enjoyed any of these, please subscribe. I love growing this community um, and I'd love to share more tips with you guys. I'll be doing a giveaway once I get to 10K on Instagram, so follow me down there unless you're completely repulsed by this video and you don't want to follow me after it. That's totally fine. I get that. It's a lot of work going into something that's only even up for 24 hours unless you put in your highlights. This was so much fun. Thank you to the 50 plus people who requested it. I hope this did the job for you. Comment down below with your favorite person to follow on Instagram, like whose feed do you like the best? Who's the best Instagrammer in your opinion? I will see you all next time. Thanks so much for watching and Cather out.